Chanel Five Essentials for Spring. Thanks so much to Allison Chase for creating this tag. I believe she created it. Actually, hers is called Chanel Five Signature Essentials for Spring. And if you haven't seen her video, make sure to head over. I will link it below for you. Allison's a good friend of mine here on YouTube and I saw this pop up and thought, what a great idea. She's such an expert in Chanel. So again, if you love Chanel, please make sure to head over, see her video, subscribe, let her know I sent you. And I love this idea because I've learned a lot about Chanel from her as well. And I wanted to apply that to the collection that I have. So I thought I'd share my Chanel five essentials for spring through Get Ready With Me. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting with the first essential, this is the La Base Illuminatrice. I love a primer in these warmer months because it really helps keep makeup in place. And there's a little bit of a glow here. Just gonna go in the center and let me just do half because then I'll show you what this next product, my second essential looks like without the primer in case you wanted to just go in with that. So going in on the left side, my left side, your right side. What I like about this too is that if you just want concealer on top, this does a little bit of blurring so you don't have to put on as much makeup. And I think for the summer months, this is especially going to be something I'll be using, but I love this for any time of the year, but I think especially going into warmer months, it's more important for me to wear this because I do get oily in the center. I have combination skin and it just really helps keep everything intact. So we've got half of that against the base Illuminatrice. There's a little bit of plumping, a little bit of blurring, and you could see here, not as much makeup is required because it does refract the light and you don't see these dark spots as much as I do on this side. One of you mentioned, or actually a couple of you mentioned, this is a smaller bottle or a tube. This is one fluid ounce. So it is smaller, I think, than anticipated. If you look at it online, it doesn't look like this is that small, but it is smaller than anticipated. And this does have a 12 month shelf life. So this would last a year for me or so because I don't put on that much makeup anyway. I put on very little, very strategically. So it just depends on how much you use, of course. We've got here the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. This is my second essential because again, as the weather gets warmer, I've been wearing this because I don't need to powder and it's been a really nice lightweight kind of product. So if you're looking for something lightweight going into warmer months, this is a great one. It is encapsulated powder, so it does set itself, especially for people who don't have oily skin issues. Um, so this is in the shade, let me see, medium plus. And this was out of stock for a while and then it came back into stock. So hopefully it's in stock. Let me just take a look here, what I'm doing. So I'm gonna apply it to the side with the primer. Hopefully this can help you make a decision about whether you think you would use primer with this or not. But yeah, I've been wearing this a lot. This might be my second one that I've had. One of my most, most loved products. So this side does not have primer. I am applying the same amount on both sides. You can see what a nice job the primer does in terms of just some really subtle perfecting qualities versus no primer. Then we're gonna do another side by side because I've had questions about using this eye concealer with this product in particular, wondering if this is too much coverage for this lightweight type of coverage. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like compared to, and now I need to get it, um, compared to the complexion touch because that's what I was using before this came along. So let me go get that. Actually, it was here the whole time. I've got the under eye concealer plus the complexion touch. Now this is like the water fresh tint, but with less water. So there's more pigment. It's a little bit more intense than this. So I have this one in B30 because I used it as a concealer and I have this one in 40. So we're going to try them side by side just so you can see the difference. And then I'm going to go in quite light handedly with this concealer because coverage is uh, very light on the water fresh tint. I'm going to do this with my brush. I don't know if you can see, just taking the slightest amount with a Sephora number 71 brush. And let's brush that under the eye. So I definitely think you can control the amount that you add here because this is pretty high coverage if you want it to be, this concealer. Just going above the eye with some of the excess here. Um, and that's how that looks. 
very, very thin layer though. Then over here, we're gonna apply this product, but we're going in first with this. So this was my combination that I was loving before this eye um, concealer came out. Wow, that's a really good concealer. The Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint by Chantecaille. Really pretty skincare makeup hybrid product. You can also see the difference in the tones. There's much more peach here than here. This is the complexion touch. Just cleaning off that same brush and then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm taking this, you can see it's a little bit thinner in consistency as well, the complexion touch. And let's go under the eye. So yeah, the complexion touch is a more seamless kind of blend between the Water Fresh Tint and the Complexion Touch versus this. This is very perfected, even though I took the slightest amount of eye concealer because it's more dense than the Water Fresh Tint. So there's a difference in, you can see how the light also reflects on both of those. So it's just a preference. So if you want a really no makeup makeup look, I'd go with this and the Water Fresh Tint. But I think this looks pretty too. It's just, like I said, it's a taste thing. Let's go in with La Prairie Targeted. For concealer, I'm gonna go in with this today. This is the Color Corrector in Pesh. I checked the ingredient deck and it's, I believe the same as their concealer, just as Color Corrector. And peach is such a great shade for these darker areas. That, that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this and let's get a good brush. This is a Sephora 57 brush. Great for larger areas. I am gonna go in with the Chanel Natural Finish Loose Powder here. And this does come with a powder puff. Oh, wait, before we do that, I forgot. I wanted to show you what you could do for a bronzer alternative. So if you like this consistency, like I said, I think the uh, complexion touch works really well over here. So if you wanna maintain that consistency with a water fresh tint in the bronzer, and not use powder or the cream bronzer, you can use another shade of the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. So I've got the one in deep here, and I have, again, medium plus, I'm gonna mix them. Mixing them up like this. Nice brush for this as well. So you can see how it just is so seamless, and I should use a mirror here. Um, but you can see my hand how sheared out that is. So I'm just gonna bronze with this. And I actually did this before they came out with the cream bronzer that was um, my tone, 392. Taking the loose powder in 30, just taking a Le Mer brush, this big fluffy brush, and I'm going to not press it into my skin, but I'm just going to really just gently roll this because um, it does such a nice job of setting itself, this water fresh tint. Putting on eyebrows with this um, eyebrow duo, but then we'll come back with eyes, cheeks, and lips. And today I just used both of the products. Actually, I don't know what I was doing. I started off with this side, which is the waxier side, which I never do. I did that first and then I went in with the powder and it worked just fine. And those were the only two products I put on my brows today. Yeah, usually I'll go in with the Dior gel, but it's a much softer look without the gel. We'll see how long they stay in place. So that is the trickiest part. But number three in terms of spring essentials for Chanel, again, I stuck to just makeup, um, is this. It's the Tisse Camellia palette. Now, it doesn't have to be this one. It can be something like, oh, where's the other one? Um, and I tried to stick to more uh, permanent items. Tisse Cambon is another one. Ooh, let me know if you want me to do a buy this, not that, like a side by side. But you can see this one's more vivid. Um, this one's more subtle, so of course I like something subtle because that's just my style and the vivid one in that is pink, so that's not, again, my kind of thing. But we're gonna go in with the light pink color here. It's more muted. Let's take this refer number 28 and I'm just gonna take that pink shade all over the lid. Nice and light. This just reminds me of spring, these pastel colors. Really pretty, soft. I like this 202 brush for the crease for me because again, I have a lot of space between here and my eyebrow, so we can fill that in. I'm gonna take this shade right here and we're going to use that as crease color. 
It's like a silvery lilac shade. I'm not worried if I go a little bit further out than intended because I'm gonna clean that up with concealer anyway. This shade right here in the outer corner, the deepest shade. Okay, I'm gonna take this shade right here, my clean hands, go right in between. Super easy way to blend and same thing. It's just easier for me to do that than with a brush. Then let's take this lightest shade and then pop that in the center. I'm gonna take this shade, the lilac shade, under the eye, really soft. Taking this lilac shade again and just blending. I'm just gonna add some eyeliner mascara. We'll be right back. I went in with this eyeliner shadow, sorry, shadow eyeliner, shadow liner coal. <laughs> I don't know, that was so hard. In Rouge Noir 08. And it's a lovely, like, purpley shade. So, not red black. It's just a lovely, like, deep violet shade. Really pretty. So, I tight lined with that and then smudged it into the lash line a little bit. Put on some Fossil Longest Lash Mascara by Chantecaille and then um, Clay de Peau concealer just in the corners to clean up. Now, one of my very favorite things is blush. This is number 72 Rose in Ciel. And this is the, uh, it's like a pinkier shade compared to number 68, which is my go-to. So this is a bit more vivid and I have here a refer number five brush. We're gonna apply that. It's this shade right here. I'm gonna do a pop of color. It works really well with the eyeshadow palette. So spring to me is like a lovely pastel eye, a flushed cheek, more on the pinky side. So we got that pop of color. We're gonna go in with another blush just to diffuse that a little bit. Jersey right here, which is a lovely like beigey toned blush with a bit of a glow. I feel like the newer version of this has more glow than the previous, but it's still really pretty, and we're just gonna soften that up. I have like a blush topper. So a nice, pretty pink blush, like a cool pink blush for the spring is beautiful. And then a really beautiful lip. This has got a healthy glow to it. It's the Rouge Allure Lestray, and this is in a beautiful pink shade. So you can see I love these pinker shades for the spring, 822 Rouge Supreme. So here we are with the final look. Very spring-like to me. There's just a prettiness to the eyeshadow palette and then that pop of pink. To me, that really says spring. Let me know what your interpretation of spring makeup is, but I feel like this is very specific to the season. So let's just recap because I kind of threw them in here and there, here and there, because I showed you the whole look. So starting number one with the Base. So the base, Illuminatrice, I love this because it requires less makeup. This also blurs, plumps, moisturizes all of those lovely things and extends the wear of makeup. So love this, especially if you just wanna go in with concealer after, really beautiful. And then item number two is such a go-to that I return to again and again. And this is for a very no makeup makeup look for me. I love this, it's the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. It just is such a beautiful lightweight coverage, blurs, doesn't totally cover up the skin. That's my favorite kind of product, so I've got medium plus, and then I used a mix of medium plus and deep for the bronzer, so you get that consistent kind of texture throughout the whole look, so I really enjoyed this. So if you wanna lighten up the base, this is a great way to go. Number three is a pastel hued kind of palette, and I chose Tisse Camellia. Like I said, there are other choices as well, but really think this speaks spring to me. I love the lilac shade. I love the very subtle pink tone. Pink is not my favorite shade, but that's a really, really pretty one. Um, so I love this one. And then for the cheek, I love a pop of cool pink, and this is a really beautiful one. 
beautiful one. This is number 72. Lovely on its own, but I love it layered. So that's why I went in with the jersey on top just to diffuse it a little bit, give it a little bit more of a glow. So if you don't want to put a whole brighter, bolder color on the cheek, you can do that just with a pop of color. And then for lip, I wanted something pink that had a little bit of cool to it. Also a little bit of brightness, but not too bright. To me, that speaks more summer. Of course, you can wear whatever shade you want at whatever time you want, but just in terms of my interpretation of spring, I think this is a very spring-like color because it has that really joyful pink shade about it without being too much. So I think it's still really classic at the same time. Very Chanel. And I love this formula because it's nice and hydrating, has a little bit of gloss to it and it brings life to the entire look. So I hope you enjoyed this spring look. Let me know if you'd like me to do this with other brands. I can definitely do this with Chantecaille. I have so many Chantecaille products. Dior is another one I could do this with. Just let me know. And I'd love to know what tips you have for your spring essentials. What are some of those things that are go-tos for the spring? What palettes are you looking at? What color stories are you looking at? I'd love to know. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.